On this episode of TKWay Weekly, I take you on a trip inside the hard drive and explain all the different components that can fail and how they can fail. This is TQA Weekly. I'm the host, Steve Smith, aka that Axis, and yes, me call me that. And if you ever have any technology questions or problems and or issues, email me at ask at tqaweekly.com. Do you have laptops or desktops? Do you know anything about hard drives? Do you understand what a spinning hard drive actually is or how it works? Do you know why I say you shouldn't have them in laptops and why you should really treat these with respect? I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't open them, especially if you have data inside that you absolutely want. If ever you have a hard drive that fails for any of the reasons I will get into in this episode, bring it to professionals that have the correct places and tools and environments to work on because I will explain why they die and maybe how they die. So opening a hard drive is fairly hard to do. Yeah, I succeeded, mainly because I already fix stuff in computers for people. You need specific types of screwdriver heads now for the newer hard drives. Furthermore, they contain a lot of delicate hardware and hard drives. I don't fix hard drives. I only open them up because they look cool. So I'm going to explain to you the inside of the hard drives. So the first part, which is the underside part of the hard drive is known as the PCB or printed circuit board. This isn't as much printed as it is actually soldered because it's an older gen hard drive but it contains chips in here for different jobs. Basically, on this side here, where you have this connector, it connects to this spinning rotor or servo that allows the disc platters to spin from 5,400 RPM up to 10,000. It may be less in RPM than that, but newer laptop drives spin at 5,400 RPM, and Barracuda drives spin at up to 10,000 RPM. Then you have the reader, writer heads, and a secondary servo, which allows the reader, writer heads to move along the surface at this bottom. Inside this PCB is a bunch of chips responsible for error checking and correcting. You have SMART, which stands for Self-Monitoring Analysis and Reporting Technology, that scans the data being error checked and corrected, and depending on how much error correction is being done, can determine the quality of the hard drive data and determine or infer from that the actual integrity of the hard drive, theoretically able to tell you when the hard drive will die. And I'll explain why this isn't, this isn't always true. But for the most part, when it comes to the actual data, it isn't that far off. So that is the underside. A few things you need to understand about this is you cannot just swipe them from one hard drive to another. So for those that are looking for a way to replace the PCB from one drive to another, even if they're identical, you can't do it. They have unique IDs for all the platters. This is what manufacturers do to make sure you spend the extra bucks bringing it to a professional or just buying a brand new hard drive. Now the inside of the hard drive is fairly simple, only very few pieces. This is a triple disc platter, double sided, six reader writer heads, moves along the surface much like a vinyl disc would. So for those that are maybe a little older, you would understand what I mean. And fact, the reader writer heads don't in fact touch the surface of this unless you move it around. So basically whenever you have gravitational deceleration, the reader writer head will bounce in the surface and cause some sort of damage that you might not necessarily see, but does actually corrupt some of the data. So you don't want to bounce these things around. Also, as you can basically infer, there are only really two different servos in here. So you've got the reader writer servo, 
and you've got the rotor servo that makes it spin. The PCB is bad enough when it shorts out. You can't replace it with another one. These can be even worse. Now, well, even worse. It depends on how you look at things. The data on this disk, let's say it was intact, okay? Would stay intact even if this rotor dies. The problem is, is you can't replace that rotor yourself. You can't even replace that servo here yourself. So what ends up happening is, if you really have data on these things that you want to keep safe, you have to bring it to professionals to replace the servos to be able to change them out. The PCB is a little bit worse than the idea that you have to figure out the unique ID, but they still have ways of figuring that out. But these things, well, it's because they're playing around with the disks. So if they scratch the disk, you may lose some of the data. Whereas the PCB, if they can figure out what the IDs are, you may not even have to open the drive. So whether if one or both of these servos dies, the data is basically considered lost unless you have tons of money that you wanna to use to basically bring it back to life. So that's the inside of a drive. You can basically destroy the data on this by opening the drive by introducing dust onto these disk bladders, like I've done already, by introducing static, which is not a good thing because it can actually erase the magnetic resonance left on the disk. Magnetic resonance is another force that could be used to actually kill it off. So I'm actually running right beside a microphone, which basically has a magnet in it. And gravity, like I said before, has a lot to do with most damage done to the surface that has anything to do with the fact that the disks bouncing in ways that it was never designed to do. In fact, they're not even designed to bounce. There's no flex here. The disk is supposed to spin inside those cutout slots and never meet at all. So that is why you should treat it with the utmost respect and do not open it unless you really, really, really want to see the inside of it, but make sure you have no data on it. Or if you have data on it, make sure you have multiple other copies of the data on a different hard drives than the one you're opening. So I may put this one on the walls decoration since I've already opened it and there's no intention of ever putting it back together. So, Besides all the other issues that I have inferred to as being possible reasons for why they can die, they can also die due to heat. So what happens is those various components can heat up and magnetism doesn't like heat as much as you would actually think. So the extreme heats may corrupt data on the drive. So would you want to replace your hard drive? Well, if you're in a laptop situation, we know it's gonna bounce around. Laptops are incredibly dense, incredibly hot. In fact, just on the border of overheating, basically you may wanna swipe the HDD for an SSD. Make sure you turn off the virtual memory in that case. This will, will reduce the heat, the power consumption, and make it immune to gravitational forces. So in those cases, you may want to avoid using that kind of hard drive. But they do actually contain a lot of space on them. So in a desktop environment, I use an SSD to boot my drive, but all my data is stored on these kinds of drives. And I just make sure I have a bunch of spare drives, not all connected to the same computer. That way it's, there are multiple different factors that have to actually occur before all the data dies. But what basically happens is I have multiple copies. I got a backup drive in a computer, like I have backups on a NAS and on external drives and jump drives. So I use as much different technology and connections as possible to make sure I don't lose anything. So those, that's the inside of a hard drive. Those are everything you need to know about it and what can happen for the hard drive to die. Next week, I talk about RAM. But this time, I talk about RAM, why Windows may refuse to start because of bad RAM, and how the blue screen of death has a relation to bad RAM. Remember to like this episode if you were 
interested in today's topic, share if you think someone else can benefit from this topic, and subscribe if you wish to learn more. For the show notes of this episode and others, for other ways of subscribing to my show, even if you want to subscribe to the newsletter, head over to tqaweekly.com. If you go to the contact section, you can also send me your questions, comments, suggestions, and our stories. Stay safe and online, and have a great day. Goodbye. Thank you.